what if consciousness isn't produced by your brain, but rather your brain is actually a quantum antenna tuning into consciousness itself? You've had those moments when insight just appears into awareness, seeming from nowhere, how you feel connected to people outside of time and space, when you know something without knowing how you know it exactly. In this video, I not only break down the quantum consciousness theory that explains this phenomenon, I'm showing you three ways you've accessed it and how to train yourself to tap into quantum consciousness at will. This fairly recent quantum discovery had me reconsider everything I thought I knew about consciousness and also confirmed some intuitive theories I wanted to believe. Now it's your turn to discover how this connects to your direct experience, because this isn't just academics. It's a doorway to experiencing reality in a fundamentally empowering way. Let's get right into it. The problem that's haunted science for decades is what philosophers call the hard problem of consciousness. You know the difference between seeing red and knowing red light has a wavelength of 700 nanometers. One is pure subjective experience, the redness of red. The other is just data. Recognizing this distinction, you're touching on something profound. Science can map every neural pathway, measure every brain wave, catalog every neurotransmitter, but it cannot explain the inner experience of consciousness at all. You've noticed how conventional explanations of consciousness always seem to miss something essential, describing the mechanics, but not capturing the mystery of being conscious. This is because materialist science has a fundamental blind spot. It assumes consciousness emerges from complexity, that if you just get enough neurons firing in the right pattern, somehow subjective experience magically appears. But emergence isn't explanation. It's just a fancy word for we don't know how this happens. So what if the problem isn't that consciousness is too complex to understand? but that we've all been looking at it from the wrong place entirely. Enter Orchestrated Objective Reduction, or ORC, O-R for short. This is the brainchild of two brilliant minds, Sir Roger Penrose, mathematical physicist and Nobel laureate, and Stuart Hameron, anesthesiologist and consciousness researcher. These two converged onto something remarkable, looking at the deepest level of physical reality, quantum mechanics, asking, what if consciousness operates here? Now your analytical mind might find the physics fascinating, while the other part of you is already connecting this to experiences you've had. Both approaches are correct because ORC OR works on multiple levels simultaneously. Picture this. Inside every neuron in your brain are tiny structures called microtubules. Think of them as quantum computers, not classical computers you're familiar with but quantum processors that can exist and work in multiple states simultaneously. According to ORC OR, these microtubules maintain quantum coherence. They stay entangled with each other and with the quantum field itself. Your brain isn't generating consciousness, it's orchestrating it. It's like a quantum symphony with consciousness both as the conductor and the music. This means consciousness isn't emerging from your brain. It's fundamental property of reality itself. And your brain is a singular instrument through which it expresses. In a way, this also indicates that your conscious existence is one way in which the quantum field is able to know itself. Here are three ways you can work directly with your quantum nature right now. The first is what I call quantum observation of awareness. Begin by bringing your awareness to awareness itself, not to specific thoughts or sensations, but zooming outside of that experience to the awareness you are the thinker of thoughts. Further, observing yourself thinking the thoughts from the space in which everything is visible. The exercise that helps me with this is a series of questions starting off once you're observing your thoughts and feelings, realizing that you're not contained within your thoughts or feelings, that there is more to you who thinks and feels. The ability to observe the thinker as well as the thought. 
Now zoom out even further and watch yourself observing the thoughts. At each level, your awareness has the ability to make opinions of what you observe independently of the previous level of awareness. Can you zoom out even further and observe the observer of the observer? Notice how you're aware of being aware. This recursive quality of consciousness, that's quantum coherence in action. You're not just observing, you're collapsing quantum possibilities into the specific conscious experience of detached awareness. This exercise is a powerful way to regain complete control of your conscious experience and helps you maintain control of your state of being. Second, coherence cultivation. You've experienced special states before, deep meditation or trance, creative flow states, moments of brilliant insight. They feel different because you're accessing quantum coherence. When you allow yourself to enter these states, you're literally synchronizing your microtubules with the quantum field. This resonance is the focused flow state that envelops you, shutting out all other sensory distractions. The more you practice entering a flow state through breath work or just revisiting flow states you've archived in your mind, the more accessible these states become. Consciously tuning into alignment with your subconscious mind in the quantum field is a skill you can develop. One way to do this is some of the sensory exercises in previous videos, and I'll also add more exercises as we expand on this topic. And the third way to access quantum consciousness is through non-local awareness. That sense of connection you feel with loved ones even at a distance, that intuitive knowing about situations you shouldn't logically know about that are often outside of time and space. Orc or R explains this as quantum entanglement. When you tune in to non-local awareness, you're accessing the quantum field of consciousness itself. This is where the realm of universal ideas exists. The space where you're able to conceptualize ideas, make generalizations, and all of the other advanced thought processes that separate us from the animal kingdom. Deep thoughts, reflections, and realizations. Anytime you make connections between concepts or extrapolate your specific knowledge and skills from one discipline to another, such as teaching yourself piano after learning clarinet, based on your ability to read sheet music, transposing, we do these types of conversions almost daily, with childhood learning being the most intense phase of this rapid conscious evolution. This doesn't quite sound like a mystical experience, does it? It's because it's quantum mechanical. You're not imagining your expanded consciousness. You're unlocking the true nature of your quantum consciousness. Now here's where it really gets interesting. The scientific establishment has been, let's say, resistant to orc or and honestly i get it this theory doesn't just challenge a few assumptions it threatens the entire materialist worldview that's dominated science for centuries if consciousness is fundamental rather than emergent if your brain is a quantum antenna rather than a biological computer then everything changes as your understanding of quantum nature deepens You'll notice something quite fascinating. Skepticism starts to feel less relevant because you're not waiting for scientific consensus. You're exploring your own direct experience. Here's how to embody this further. Start treating your consciousness as the primary reality, not a byproduct. When you meditate, know that you're not just relaxing, you're accessing quantum coherence. When you have intuitive insights, you're not being irrational. You're receiving information through quantum channels. And think about this. If ORC OR is correct, artificial intelligence will never achieve true consciousness through classical computing alone. Consciousness requires quantum substrates. This means your awareness isn't something that can be replicated or replaced. It's fundamentally unique to quantum biological systems. As you continue integrating these concepts, you'll find yourself naturally becoming more aware of the quantum dimensions in your everyday experience. The controversy becomes irrelevant when you're living the reality. But here's the most interesting insight that Orc OR reveals. The universe isn't computing consciousness. The universe is consciousness. 
considering that microtubules are quantum processors and quantum mechanics is the fundamental language of reality, then consciousness isn't something that emerged from dead matter. Consciousness is the field from which matter emerges. Thoughts become things. When you fully grasp this principle, you begin to experience yourself, not as a body that somehow became conscious, but as consciousness that's having a human experience. Your awareness isn't trapped inside your skull. It's connected to the quantum fabric of reality itself. This means every moment of awareness, every flash of insight, every experience of connection, you're not just observing reality. You're participating in its co-creation. You're not separate from the universe. You're how the universe experiences itself. Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff didn't just propose a theory about consciousness. They revealed the quantum nature of your existence, which means your potential isn't limited by brain chemistry or your neural networks. Your potential is quantum. When you recognize this truth, you discover that consciousness isn't something you have. It's a part of you as much as you are a part of it. So I'm curious, what quantum aspects of consciousness have you noticed in your own experience? Share with us below and let us explore this together. Because the future of consciousness research isn't just about understanding this theory. It's about living out the reality. And if this expanded your awareness of what consciousness really is, you know what to do. There's so much more to explore in quantum psychology. And I'll see you in the next one.